Okay, in this video we're going to talk about horizontal translation. So you're graphing something, you're going to apply a horizontal translation to your graph. So I already did part one, which was vertical translation, so if you missed that one, you can check that out. But this time we're doing horizontal translations, so you'll have something that looks like this. Y equals x squared that does not have a horizontal translation, the horizontal translation would be like y equals x minus 3 squared, something like that. So, see I think instead of x minus 3, let's keep this one nice and simple and let's go x minus 1. So I was thinking between the break between video 1 and video 2, which is this one, what does translation mean? If you're a translator, right, it's your job to change something from one language to another. So I was thinking, what we're really doing, just like a translator copies a message from one language to another, when we're talking about translations, we're thinking taking our curve and copying it and dropping it down on our graph somewhere else. So we're not changing anything in our graph with translations, we're just changing the position that it's located on the graph. And so, we're going to start with our graph y equals x squared, and we're just going to see what it looks like, make an xy chart. I went over this in a lot of detail in part one, vertical translations, on how to make, how to graph y equals x squared, so you can check that out if you need to. But I'm going to say x is negative 1, 0, 1. Always good to have a negative point. Get 0 in there and get a positive point. So if x was negative 1, negative 1 squared would be positive 1 for y. 0 squared, y would be 0, and 1 squared would be 1. So now I've got the points negative 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1. I need to draw myself a little for me to graph it, and negative 1, 1, be there, 0, 0, and positive 1, positive 1. Connect the dots in a smooth curve, and you get something that looks like that, just our basic parabola. So, now we want to see what does a horizontal translation really do. So, let's come back up here. This is the graph that's been had a vertic or excuse me, a horizontal translation applied to it. So we're going to do the same thing we did over here, make a little xy chart. And so let's let x equal negative 1, 0, and 1 again. And if x was negative 1, then up here I would have negative 1 minus 1. Negative 1 minus 1 would be negative 2. And negative 2 squared means negative 2 times negative 2. Can you see that? Yes. Negative 2 times negative 2, 2 times 2 is 4, negative times a negative is a positive. So I've got positive 4. Then I've got zero minus 1 will be negative 1 squared, be positive 1, and if I put 1 in here, I've got 1 minus 1 squared, that would be 0, 0 squared would be 0. So now I've got the points, negative 1, 4, 0, 1, and 1, 0. So let's come back to our grid and let's stick those points on. So I've got negative 1, 4, I've got 0, 1, and I've got 1, 0. So, I think actually, you can't really see what's going on there, so let me add another point. I'm going to add another point up here. Let's let x equal 3. So if x equals 3, 3 minus 1 would just be 2 and 2 squared would be 4. So we've got another point at 3, 4. So if we go over here, 1, 2, 3 in the x direction, 1, 2, 3, 4 in the y direction, we would be over here. 
so my scale is not very good. These should be exactly the same width. But anyway, let's talk about where our x-intercept is, where it's crossing the x-axis. It crosses here at the point 1, 0, right? And that was one of our points over here. The x-intercept, remember, is the place where y equals 0. Where did y equal 0 here? At x equals 1. If we look back at our original, where did y equal 0? At x equals 0. So when we've got y equals x minus 1 squared, what we're doing is taking our original graph and we're moving it because we've got negative 1 here. The negative tells you move to the right. And the 1, so let me make that a little bit bigger, x minus 1 squared. The negative tells me we're moving our whole graph to the right and the 1 tells me we're moving it one unit. So if we had something like y equals x minus 3 squared, we would take our original graph and we would move it 3 units to the right. So we'd move it 1, 2, 3, it would be over there somewhere. If we had y equals x plus 3, we would be moving it 3 units this time, we would be moving it to the left. So, we would take our original graph and we would move it one, two, three units to the left. So now, instead of our parabola crossing at the point zero, zero, it would now cross at negative three, zero, and it would look something like that. So I hope this helps. If you have any questions, you can check out my website or leave them in the comments, and I'll see you guys back for part three. Bye.